When people think about watches used by explorers, they typically think of Rolex or Omega, both known for supplying many expeditions with watches. The Omega Speedmaster has been utilized by many explorers, both terrestrial and extraterrestrial. Rolex provided an Oyster Perpetual model to Sir Edmund Hillary for his ascent of Everest. Whether he was wearing it at the summit or not, that's, that's a whole other story. Rolex, under the Tudor brand, provided reference 7809s to the Greenland Expedition from 1952 to 1954. Seiko has a great reputation for being rugged tool watches, but their expedition history is lesser known. Seiko is a brand that has been present throughout recent history, providing tools to professionals of various degrees. Their watches are renowned throughout the dive community, but their watches are also well regarded by outdoor enthusiasts. Here are some examples of Seiko watches being used on expeditions. Naomi O'Mara had climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua, Mont Blanc, the Matterhorn, and Everest before he was 30. He was actually the first person from Japan to reach the top of Everest, and on his wrist was a Seiko reference 6105. This watch was made famous by the movie Apocalypse Now, where it was worn by Captain Willard. This watch was made for divers and is a simple time-only watch with a date and timing bezel. However, the ruggedness and legibility made it a favorite among explorers. This particular reference is highly collectible due to its popular culture association and can be hard to find in good original condition. On October 21st, 1979, the McMurdo Sound, Sediment and Tectonic Study in Antarctica began a study that was largely to understand the formation of Antarctica and how the ice sheets came together. This involved drilling multiple samples of ice and examining them. The project was a joint venture between the Victoria University of Wellington and the Japanese Antarctic Research Expedition. Dr. Tetsuo Tori was one of the scientists on this expedition and was well known for giving gifts to his colleagues. On this particular expedition, he gifted some colleagues commemorative Seiko 6306s with the mission name and date on the dial. There is a great story about these watches over on Hodinki, which I highly recommend. Gaia Chung Kang is just a little under 8,000 meters in elevation. Prior to 1964, the mountain had not yet been summited. On April 10th, a team of three tackled the summit and were successful. This is an original silver wave, which is a reference J12082. This is a time-only watch with an internal timing bezel. These watches were used on the first ever ascent of Gaia Chung in 1964, although they were modified with a date for the expedition. The book, This is Gaia Chung, is a recent release that details this expedition and discusses the modified silver waves in detail. Ken Noguchi is an accomplished explorer who climbed the seven summits before he was 25. I am not sure if he was sponsored by Seiko, but it appears he at least had a close relationship with the brand and provided them with feedback. In 1997, he made his first attempt at Everest wearing a SBCN003. This is also known as the Landmaster Summiteer. This watch has a pressure gauge, altimeter, GMT, and alarm, all packed in a one-piece titanium case. Unfortunately, he did not summit in 1997. On his 1998 attempt, he wore a different Landmaster, the reference SBCW021. This watch was created based on recommendations from Ken Noguchi to Seiko. Here is a quote from the book, A Journey in Time. By the age of 25, he had scaled all seven and achieved his aim. He is a satisfied user and tester of the Landmaster and wore a Landmaster Summiteer with an altitude gauge for the first time during his 1997 assault from the China side. Afterwards, 
he pointed out that the minute markings are not meaningful when the effects of altitude impair one's judgment. For his assault the following year, from the Nepal side, Mr. Noguchi wore Landmaster Sega Martha, then incorporated further improvements in legibility. This was a kinetic model with priority given to legibility of the dial, hour, and minute hands, and a 24 hour hand. The bezel was the part of the watch most likely to be damaged by scraping or knocking on a rock, and so it was manufactured from a ceramic metal alloy that was impervious to scratches. It featured 24 hour markings in relief to make it easy to read. Unfortunately, Ken was not successful on his 1998 attempt. He was successful on his 1999 attempt, which he wore a SBDW003, which is essentially a SBCW0021 with an upgraded movement. Masatasu Abe has traveled more than 30,000 kilometers by human-powered means only. His accomplishments include traveling 11,000 kilometers across South America in 2006, completing the American Continental Divide Trail in 2012, and rafting 2,000 kilometers in the Amazon, just to name a few. In 2019, Abe became the first Japanese explorer to walk the 918 kilometers to the South Pole. During this expedition, he wore a Seiko SBEJ001, a Prospect Landmaster Automatic GMT. This watch features a compass bezel, date, and power reserve. To be honest, this is my least favorite watch on the list. Uh, these watches are massive, and to be honest, I don't think they're very well executed. Exploration is not about who puts up the most kilometers. It's about seeing the world. The next explorer is Japanese photographer Tsutomu Endo. In the 1990s, he was a photographer of winter sports. He later transitioned to photography in indigenous people in northern regions such as Greenland and Siberia. His watch of choice was a Seiko SBDX014 Marine Master. This watch is a Seiko diver with a tuna case. It is a time-only watch with a timing bezel. The case is PVD and it has a rubber strap, although Endo preferred to wear his on a leather bun strap. Mitsuru Oba is the last explorer we will discuss today. There is very little information out there on him. However, in 1997, he crossed the North Pole solo. It is unclear whether or not he was wearing the watch at the time. However, Seiko made a piece to commemorate the expedition the Landmaster SBCW009. This is my favorite watch on the list and features a beautiful blue dial with the North Pole map engraved in it. The watch features a kinetic movement with a yellow GMT hand, a date, and a compass bezel. In 1998, he ran around the world and crossed the South Pole. On this expedition, he wore the Landmaster SBCW023. This is not my favorite watch on the list, but by far the coolest watch on the list. At first glance, it looks like an SBCW009 with a different colorway. On closer inspection, we can see that the south pole is engraved in the dial instead. However, the keen observer will note the GMT numerals on the outer chapter ring are in reverse order. This is because the GMT hand runs counterclockwise. Now, Apparently this is useful for navigating in the South Pole because the orientation of the sun. I honestly do not truly understand the advantage of this function, but I will take Seiko's word for it. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and had as much fun learning about Seiko Expedition watches as I did researching them. If you know of any other watches that I may have missed, please let me know in the comments. If you- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we go, I just want to make one correction. Uh, Naomi Omera also used a Seiko 61597001. In fact, this watch was the watch he wore during his 1970 Everest Summit. And with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. 
If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.